I think there's this big question that a lot of people have around AI, which is, aren't the incumbents positioned to win this? They have all the data, they have all the engineers, like they have all the capital. And I think the answer in many cases is that the best and most interesting products are actually new interfaces that are just now enabled due to AI. We have seen in the last, let's say, 18 months, yeah. two years, a lot of companies start to implement AI yeah. into their existing products. But it almost feels kind of like a copy-paste, like let's just mm -hmm. kind of wedge this in here. Yeah. But you wrote a really great article kind of differentiating between what is AI augmented yeah. and what is AI native. Yeah. Maybe you could just speak to that difference. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's something that we think a lot about and are really excited about. Um, I think there's this big question that a lot of people have around AI, which is, isn't aren't the incumbents position to win this. Mm -hmm. They have all the data, they have all the engineers, like they have all the capital. And I think the answer in many cases is that the best and most interesting products are actually new interfaces that are just now enabled due to AI. Mm. Uh, so there, you would build the product differently starting now in 2024 than if you had to take a product invented in 2014 or 2015, even honestly, 2022 or 2023, yeah. and kind of add AI to it. And where a lot of the incumbents get stuck is they can't really cannibalize or put their existing product or platform too much at risk. Mm -hmm. And so they tack on AI features versus like reimagining what the experience would look like. A great example of this from the prior era would be you know, putting Sears on a website was not better than Amazon. Like Amazon was kind of a new business model right. and a new way of finding and purchasing things that was enabled by the internet. Um, and I think we're going to see the same thing with AI, kind of a new group of legendary companies that are native to this to this platform shift. Yeah, my favorite example of just kind of like the skeuomorphic gone wrong yes. is like the Zoom happy hour. Yes. Where it's like, yes. There's better ways we can connect digitally exactly. than just like being in a you know, box yes. and talking to each other. Yes. Um, okay, so what you talked about in this article are a couple different features where yeah. you're already kind of seeing this happen. Yeah. So maybe we could just go down that list. What What's an example of yeah. something that you think is AI native? Yeah, I think the biggest one that, you know, most people have encountered so far is a product or a tool that kind of gets rid of the blank page. So this kind of anxious, gnawing feeling that you have when you're starting a project, when you're starting a document, or even a work of art of like, how do I get from nothing to something? Mm -hmm. And so that's the first thing that a lot of AI native companies do really well is they just make the time incredibly short to get from completely blank page to some sort of output that you can iterate on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of examples of this in things as complicated as websites. Like there's a, a company called Durable that's been used to make millions of websites where you can kind of plug in what your company does, a little bit of information, and it gets you a great starting point that then you can use to kind of further iterate on. There's a similar company called Viscom, but it's more in the almost industrial design and engineering space. And you have engineers at, at real companies, shoe companies, car companies, that are essentially starting with a sketch, like a paper sketch, putting it into Viscom uh -huh. and getting the first attempt at a render. Uh, and that gets them, you know, 80% of the way there, or at least kind of really lowers the barrier to starting a project. Uh, and they, they can then do kind of a lot of the deeper and more custom work after that. Um, so that's number one. I would say number two that's really native to AI is multimodal. Uh, mm -hmm. And that means combining different types of inputs and different forms of media to construct a product. Um, one very fun example of this has been HeyGen, mm -hmm. which is like a consumer and now enterprise video avatar company. And so they've combined a model that takes photos and videos of you and can map your face and can move your lips and your eyes and everything to make the lip syncing look real with an audio model yeah. that then can sound like you as well. Um, and so putting those pieces, those separate pieces together into a net new product. Okay, amazing. So we've talked about two. So the yes. first one was killing the blank page problem. Yeah. And then we talked about 
multimodal yes. and also multimedia yes. is something you've mentioned as well. <laughs> What's the next one? We've been seeing a lot of the best companies build iteration into the product, not just one-shot generation. Mm -hmm. And so by that, I mean there's lots of products. Even we've seen Meta release one recently that's like generate an image, which is great. It's exciting. In some ways, it's a little bit of a, and I say this lovingly, like gimmicky product because you might use it as like a fun thing to send to a friend or to post on Twitter or something, but you're not likely to do deep work in it. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing AI native companies do is kind of build all of the um, iteration tools into the product. So mm -hmm. maybe actually that V0 is not exactly what you want. Um, one example would be Pika Labs is a video generator. Mm -hmm. So you can generate your clip and then you can actually go in and select specific parts of the clip, specific characters, specific regions and regenerate right. that. And that's just so much more rich and helpful than having to regenerate a one shot mm -hmm. every time. It becomes like, like a slot machine. Yes. In the former example. Exactly. Yes. Versus like, oh, Great, I finally landed on something that I'm 95% of the way there. Let me fix the 5% instead of like, oh, this one's 95% of the way there. It's not 100, so I have to try again and maybe get something that's 30% right? of the way there. Like you're doing that calculus, right, where yes. you get the 95 and you're like, should I just go with the 95? It's not exactly what yeah. I want. Or do I go back to the slot machine yes. and, you know. Because there's so much randomness yeah. still. Yeah. So that's been exciting. A, a related concept, actually, um, which is kind of our fourth thing that we are excited about with AI native products is kind of refinement in platform. Mm. You know, maybe creating the initial asset gets you a lot of the way there in terms of a final product. Uh, but there's always post-production on almost mm. anything. There's a, a company called Crea that allows you to make AI art. And so once you've kind of sketched the art, you know, generated the image, you can then within the same canvas take it to an upscaler that then makes the image from what is still hopefully an exciting artwork into something a lot more polished and, and beautiful. Another example would be Eleven Labs. Now, you know, you can generate voices on Eleven. You can put in a script and get the output, but they now have a full product to build out an audiobook there. Mm. So you don't just have to take the Eleven voice and go somewhere else to finish it. Right. You can kind of further refine on the exact version of the product that is useful to you. So in a way, what you're saying is in the AI augmented yes. applications, AI is being added in to the already core feature set yeah. versus in this example that you yeah. gave with Eleven Labs, it's actually the features are being built around the model. Right? Yes. It's being built around the AI yeah. application. Yeah. And often, like, the best teams that we see are, there's so many models you can use now and, and so many ways you can kind of tune and refine a model. And so the best teams that we see are incredibly thoughtful about, like, okay, what are the features? If, starting from scratch, if you thought about the most magical version of this product, mm -hmm. what are the features of that? And then, like, what can we pick and choose from these different models that allow us to construct that from scratch? Mm -hmm. Versus, again, if you have to use a certain, like, Google Calendar, Google's probably not going to invent Calendar because they have, like, a massive calendaring product. Um, so they're more likely to maybe find a model that helps them make Google Calendar slightly better right. versus reimagine what, like, a, a calendar interface could look like. Which could have voice or, as yes, you're saying, right? it probably looks extremely different than, like, what a Google Calendar looks like right now. Absolutely. All right, so the final one uh, yes. you have is around remixing. What yes, does that mean? we love this concept. <laughs> it's very fun. I think it's actually core to a lot of of AI products now and something that we're seeing get built into all all types of interfaces, which is really exciting. I think it really gets to what is special about AI, which is that you can take anything and instantly make it something else. Okay. Uh, so you can put your own spin on it. Like mm -hmm. image generation is the best example. We've probably all taken a prompt from somewhere and put it into mid-journey and maybe mm -hmm. tweaked it a little bit. Yep. Um, we're seeing people kind of make this a core feature of the product. Another example in photos, actually, mm -hmm. there's a company called Imogen that's used by a lot of wedding photographers. And photographers can almost build their own models for their editing style, like famous photographers, influential photographers, Ooh. even just awesome kind of undiscovered talents. And then they can offer those 
as something that another photographer can take, use, iterate on, tweak a little bit to make it their own, but it provides a really exciting kind of jumping off point. And something that like was not possible prior mm-hmm. to AI. Another example we love, a company called Gamma, that's a slide deck generator. That's the simplest way to say it, but the actual magic of, of Gamma is that every piece of content is kind of a block that you can instantly transpose and transform. So maybe you get through the deck and you realize this should be a memo instead, <laughs> which has happened to me before. Oh gosh. Or yes. this should be a landing page <laughs> instead. Yeah. Then you can just tell the AI, okay, take this and make it a document instead. Oh. And so that kind of thing is Again, newly enabled because of AI. In the past, you'd have to copy and paste all that text and all those images and probably rewrite it to make it more appropriate for the different format. Mm -hmm. So again, that's like the type of product that Google is probably not going to build or at least is not going to build for a while and is a real advantage for more native AI companies. So, I mean, we went through five different features or ways that people are kind of rethinking the way that AI can be really native in applications um, and not just augmented. Yeah. But we're also early, right? I mean, I love that you gave an example for every single one of these, (laughs) but what do you think is coming, right? Because I feel like we're not at the end where there's a lot of exploration to be done. We're seeing a lot of almost kind of one-off tools right now, which again, don't get me wrong, many of them are amazing. We've seen quote unquote, like single feature tools, like a background remover, image generator, Mm -hmm. scale to hundreds of millions of revenue, which is incredible. But now if you're making something with AI, say you're making a movie with AI, you probably have to generate an example image in one place, Mm -hmm. then take it to another platform to animate it, then take it to another platform to get a song for it, and then another platform to get maybe a voiceover or captions or something like that. So we're expecting to see more platforms Maybe they don't build the model for each of those themselves, but they at least integrate with the best models for Mm -hmm. each of those and let you do it in one space, whether that's a creative workspace or an actual work workspace if you're making a deck or a document or a strategy memo or something like that. And again, those will probably be incorporate different modalities of input. Like Mm -hmm. sometimes when I'm writing a blog post, I want to start it in typing and then, you know, I come back to it five hours later or maybe I'm in an Uber and I have a thought and I just want to be able to voice dictate that. I think we're going to see more platforms combining kind of different modalities of content, which is exciting. The last thing, and this maybe seems, again, counterintuitive, but we still think there is a lot of use for human content um, and it has a lot of value. And a lot of AI platforms now It's only the AI. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we expect to see platforms that allow you to kind of treat human and AI content as almost equal citizens. So they allow you to edit. For example, if you shoot – if you're a social media influencer – you shoot a video of yourself, you should be able to edit that video and then add AI-generated B-roll in the same place Right. Uh, versus having these live as two different workflows. You do one in this place, you do one in the other, then you have to come together and combine them. That's so interesting. I mean, I think of something we talked about earlier, Circle, right, where you have yes. different communities or chats with yeah. your AIs and your friends yes. in the same place. And so yes. you're absolutely right that there's kind of this mixing and matching that Maybe maybe it's a lot more interesting than one or the other. Totally. It's exactly exactly the same concept. And again, to the point of like a feed of AI content alone is maybe not that interesting. And so mm-hmm. we expect to see even more tools combine like the humanness of products with kind of the best of AI to kind of turbocharge the output, the result, or, or whatever you could make with it. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. I'm, I feel like people sometimes have, you know, the hot take that apps yes. haven't changed much yes. in the last couple of years. <laughs> yes. And so now we're we're seeing it. You know, those people yes. got what they wish for. And I feel like, you know, my, my home screen is going to look completely yeah. different in six months. It has never been more exciting to be in consumer. It's been an incredible platform shift already. I think back about where we were a year ago in terms of the types of products that were being developed and used to where we are now. And I just can't imagine what, where we're going to be five <laughs> years from now, given that rate of change. It's been awesome. As a reminder, the content here is for informational purposes only, should not be taken as legal, business, tax, or investment advice, or be used to evaluate any investment or security, and is not directed at any investors or potential investors in any A16Z fund. 
Please note that A16Z and its affiliates may also maintain investments in the companies discussed in this podcast. For more details, including a link to our investments, please see a16z.com slash disclosures.